far enough, Jimmy. Where are the others? Have to be us. I can't go any further. We're up in from the ship. There, there won't be any fallout. If only we could have saved her. Could have been somewhere to shelter at least. <laughs> oh, some world we've come down on. Others went at, at an angle. Oh, maybe we were lucky. Maybe the ship won't blow. We weren't lucky. The ship has flown. Goodbye, old ship. And all who flew in her. Goodbye, dear Mother Earth. Gentlemen, if you could tell me, a poor, bewildered engineer, just where in the universe we put Doc, I'll be very grateful. Biotex, the new soak and free wash powder brings you SF-68, stories which plunge vividly into other worlds, other dimensions, other times. SF-68. Letter from Mrs. Brookfights of Spoon Street, Lakeside, Cape Town during the week, and she wrote to me about Biotex. She said, My daughter's gym tunic was very badly stained. With the results, she would not wear it. I decided to try Biotex, which you advertise, and I soaked the garment for a few hours, and much to my amazement, the stains disappeared. I've spoken about this product to my friends who are now using Biotex, and I'd like to say a big thank you for making this product available to us. Well, as I've been saying for a little while, Mrs. Brookfights and you other ladies, Biotex is absolutely marvelous when it comes to helping get rid of those very stubborn stains. I've kept on emphasizing that you let soaking do your washing. And you will notice that these stains just vanish by using Biotex merely by soaking overnight or for a couple of hours in warm water or pre-washing in your washing machine. It is spelt B-I-O-T-E-X. SF-68 presents... McKay, adapted for radio and produced by Michael McKay. on this planet. Approximately 70 days have passed since the disintegration of our ship Lone Star. As you all know, the ship's own heart generators, because of a breakdown in the electronic regulators, flung us far from the regular shipping lane. We are perhaps fortunate to have landed anywhere at all. This is history, Doctor. Get on with this. The uh, planet on which we've landed is unknown. It's pretty inhospitable. Temperature, always 85 degrees Fahrenheit. And this constant drizzle of rain falling. Ah, Boyle, they know all this. I'd like to ask you, Doctor, what do you think our chances of being picked it up It seems there is no intelligent life here. Yeah, hang on, Doctor. Yes, Miss Davidson, I think Dr. Boyle will agree with me when I say our chances are slim. No communication is possible with other ships or with planet stations when the interstellar drive is operating. When we snapped out of the drive, we sent out a distress signal, but we couldn't say where we were. We shall have to establish ourselves here, build more huts like this one, perhaps a, a little drier than this one. The tragedy is our ship, if only it hadn't disintegrated. But at least we were all clear. We'll have to work hard, pull together. We've got to give our descendants as good a start as possible. If ever we are picked up, well, that would be wonderful. But as I see it, there's little chance. Can you guarantee that our children will have a good chance of survival? Miss Davidson, I can't 
guarantee anything. I have no instruments, no drugs, you're right. All I can tell you is that your chances of safe deliveries are far better than they would have been on Earth during, say, the 18th century. One thing, one thing we must avoid is degeneration. We have formed a council. The women are outnumbered heavily. We want no trouble. We have to maintain some standard of civilization. We must have no crimes of passion. We, the council, must decide. We must be the ultimate court. There are about four hours of daylight left. John Terence, Michael Warner, have your men assembled. We have to begin the construction of the third hut.
Our ladies, we're speaking about biotechs in a series of programs that Mrs. E.B. Granger of Gordon Road Heathfield in the Cape wrote to say that she decided to try our biotechs just to see if it lived up to our claims. And she said, I bought a packet, and lo and behold, it actually did just what the advert said. I'm so proud of the children's white shirts, the hankies, and the underwear that I want to say it will be biotechs for me every washing day from now on. Some of my family's accessories were left with slight stains, but now, thanks to biotech soaking, they come out white, and the stains do go away, as you say. Now, that is a statement from Mrs. Granger of Heathfield of the Cape, and it bears out what we have been saying to you ladies ever since biotechs first came on the market. We said to you, it is different to any washing product that you've ever used before. We claim that the stubborn stains will vanish, and people like Mrs. Granger bear out our claims. Remember, biotechs. Whatever the devil they are, they must think we come from that planet. We are merciful heavens. Do you realize what we are? We are specimens, caged like, like animals. And the greatest insult of all, after all that time in their ship, free from this drizzle, they've given it back to us in our cage. Because they think we can't live without it. Oh, the wretched irony of it. Cages on all sides. Poor Mary. Poor dear Mary. It's a zoo. How long were we in their ship, Doc? Mm, three days a week. In that darkness, how could I know? Why didn't they want us to look out of the ports? <sighs> Not forget the first sight of the one that came in to see us as long as I live. I thought for a minute Mary had died. She, she didn't seem to be breathing. We're on another planet, that's for sure. This one's like... one's like Earth. Sunshine. Look at it. And we are cooped up in here. Who oh, are you ugly little... Pull yourself together. So far we haven't been ill-treated. We're all right. Apart from this blasted rain... And the humidity in here. But if you go on like that, how are we ever going to convince them that we are a rational being? Okay, okay. I... What? What did you say? I said we're all right apart from the humidity and... No, no. But about rational... You mean... But I thought you'd realize. They think we're animals. They don't consider us intelligent. What? Well, look at us. We're, we're, we're naked. Our clothes have rotted. The process began on, on our first planet. And all that steam and moisture, and well, clothes can't stand now, up. We really. know all that. I'm trying to tell you, Hawkins. We don't look like them. Fleshy beetle things shaped like beer barrels with tentacles. Don't you see? We look to them as they look to us. Aliens, yes. But they don't even realize we can read them. But, but how long are they going to keep us like this? Oh, here are more of them coming outside. They're just staring. They wear clothes. I'd have to take poor Mary and put her in a different cage. I could have died. Is it obvious why they segregated her? Even in this rain, just one warm up. Why? They realized she was of a different sex. Perhaps they thought we'd fight or something. Well, how'd they know that? I mean... Well, well, we've got to prove that we're rational beings. Try Pythagoras theorem on them again. We tried that. Yes. Again. Maybe they were stupid yet for me. It is a zoo. Look at them. Use those pieces of reed over there. Make the triangle. Go on. I'll construct the square. Look, they're eating. They carry sweets in their pockets. Apart from their looks, they're, they're sort of human. <laughs> I wish they were allowed to feed the animals. I'm sick of that darn fungus. Finished? There you are, then, you stupid, fat, great lumps of... That's my Agnes's theorem. Now let us out, you ignorant... Oh, it's sunshine out there. We're under this perpetual bathroom shower. They're going away. Head up with us. I wish they'd let Mary come in here with us. At least we'd all be together, then. Let's recapitulate. Nothing else to do. Now, we were taken from our camp by the helicopter thing. Hey, you would see what they put in the left hand cage since last night. Things like a very great lobster with feeders. They think we're the same as that. We were taken to the survey ship, a vessel that seemed in no way superior to Earth's interstellar ships. They switched off the hose pipes. Too late for me, I'm dying. Wonder why? Just hope they don't put it back on again. You assure us, Hawkins, that the survey ship used air and half drive or something very like it, huh? Correct. They've taken Mary away. What? What are they going to do to her? I, uh, well, I... Do you think they're going to finish that, sir? Maybe they don't know the difference between a man and a woman. Perhaps they've taken her to, to cut her up and... Hold on, hold on. We don't know. We 
terrestrial world. I mean, we, we on Earth live as sacred animals. That's how we discovered... But we are not animals! We don't know that. Listen, we've got to persuade them that we're intelligent. Listen, the whole history of man is a history of a fire-making, tool-using animal. Then make fire. The tools and use them. What with? We've discussed that. None of us even wears false teeth. Even so, when I was a youngster, there was a, among the cadets in the interstellar ships a revival of old arts and crafts. We thought of ourselves as direct descendants from the line of old Winjana sailormen. So we learned how to splice rope and wire, how to tie fancy knots and all the rest of it. We were in a passenger ship, you see. We used to make baskets secretly. We used to paint them vivid colors and then sell them to the passengers as genuine souvenirs from the lost planet Arcturus VI. In the end, the old man and the lady... You mean... It's rather distressing that... We could prove... We baskets and, and prove that we're intelligent that way. It might work. It might just work. You could teach us. On the other hand, there are birds on Earth that weave birds for their mates, aren't there? At uh, nesting time. Meeting time. That they might just think... We'll give it a go. So, we've stripped the tree ferns, woven every darn bit of bedding into a ruddy basket. And what do we get? They must think we're blasted birds. All they give us is Miss Mary Hart. Thank you very much, Miss Hart. Hawkins. Anybody think you were relieved to know that Mary hadn't been taken somewhere off for some hideous experiment? Oh, I am, I am. I'm just wondering what our beetle friends expect us to do with Mary now they've thrown her in with us. Come into my basket, Mary. I've made a nest for you. Oh, boy, are you? <laughs> Listen. While we can laugh at ourselves, there's hope. We can't. We're dead. He's right. Dr. Boyle's right. Oh, I wonder how the rest of them are getting on in that other world. Fighting now, I should imagine, without us there as policemen. I'm sick of fungus. All the same, just both of you. Keep your hands to yourselves as far as Mary's concerned. You hear? She's my girl. Bennett, in the circumstances, I hardly think there's any need. And that goes to you too, you old goat. Don't be a fool, Bennett. This isn't the time or the place for this sort of... If you don't mind. Why are you all discussing my safety and this... This is a gripping prison. I'd like to remind you that I'm nobody's girl, and I can look after myself. Thank you very much. Now, can we please try and convince these beetle creatures that we're intelligent, rational beings before we're all taken away and vivisected? <laughs> equivalent of a mouse. He comes up through the fort sometimes to look for bits of food. We're trying to tame him. Do something about him. Poison him or, or trap him. No. Tomorrow. No. No. Tomorrow. Hawkins, we've got to work out some way we can persuade these creatures we're not animals. Otherwise, we'll spend the rest of our lives sitting about naked in a cage. Uh, uh, what are you doing? Making a trap to catch Joe. With baskets. At least our craftsmanship's come in handy for something. There are more important things than catching that battered mouse. We must... Oh, no. Not the rain again. That's it. 
Did you hear? I've got him. There, there he is, that little beggar. Look at him. Hello, Joe. Kill him. Oh, Mary, look at him. <laughs> He's angry. <laughs> like a little ball of fluff. Oh, never mind, little ball of fluff. Head hopeless, you can't kill him. <laughs> Here we are, in a cage. And now we've got something else in a cage, in our cage. Cage within a cage. Gentlemen, we've got to find a way of persuading these oh, things to... This is rather pretty, isn't it? Let's see if you need food. Give me a bit of fungus. Oh, he's sweet. I had a golden hamster when I was a little girl. Kept him in a box. Blue and yellow box. And he drank milk. understand is why they took Joe in his basket as well as Hawkins. Looks unhealthy for us, Doc. Hawkins is probably stuck and mounted in the museum. They could. That's the horrible part of it. They could. There must be some way. Something we can do to make them understand we're not their equivalent of monkeys or dog what? We made baskets. We we, we played games. We, We counted. Using ourselves as sort of counting beats. We've even played chess. Lost souls as chess pieces, though. Why the devil we should expect these creatures, all these light years from Earth, to know about chess? I, I can't imagine. They don't understand our speech. We're nothing civilized to show them, not, not even an ornament of any kind. I give up. We can't give up. We can't give up. We do, we're as good as dead. And now they've, they've taken even the devil away. Oh, I liked him. He was fun in his little cage. You wanted to kill him, remember? Forget it, Fennett. Uh, forget it, Fennett. Point. Oh, what do we do? No! Don't come for us now! I don't need a pet, Steve! Oh, please! It's all right. Come on, I... I'll kill myself! Hey, 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 it's... It's Hawkins! You can come out now. Hawkins! No. What's happened to you? You... you... Surprising what a shave and a wash and clothes will do, isn't it? My friends, our hosts have apologized very sincerely. And they have more suitable accommodation prepared for us. Then, as soon as they have a ship ready, we're to go and pick up the other survivors. But, but how did you... I mean, what made them realize they're rational beings? I mean, not like like that, that lobster thing next door. Steady, Doc. How do you know that lobster thing isn't a rational being? He might have the same problem as us. But how did they find out that we're intelligent thinking green? We've got Joe to thank for that. Joe? Yes, Joe. Little mousy Joe in his cage where we trapped him. We tried all our Mathematica, Pythagoras' theorem, chess, everything. We could have saved ourselves the trouble. They found out what we were because of what we did to little Joe. What do you mean? Only rational beings put other beings in cages. in your washing machine. Get amazing new Biotex today. I feel like a new man. It's a lovely day today. I thought and I had flu. I took a grandpa headache powder and I'm well better. When colds and flu are about, grandpa headache powders are what you need. Grandpa headache powders work fast because they dissolve almost immediately. Grandpa makes all those dreadful flu symptoms disappear quickly. So, whenever you're in pain, get fast relief. Get grandpa headache powder. Ah, grandpa. You have just been listening to The Cage by Bertram Chandler. Brought to you by Biotex, the new soak and pre-wash powder. 
The Cage was adapted for broadcasting and produced by Michael McCabe. Listen again next Friday night at half past nine to SF 68.